Hi, and welcome to Reviewing with Mrs. Wages. Today's topic is the structure of DNA. Let's get to it. The nucleus of a normal human cell contains 46 chromosomes. Together, these 46 chromosomes add up to about 2 meters of DNA. This means that DNA is a very long and thin molecule. And this molecule has two distinct sides that each coil up to form what is called a double helix. This makes DNA resemble a twisted ladder. And just like RNA, DNA is a nucleic acid, and both are polymers. This means they're composed of smaller building block molecules, or monomers, that link together in a chain-like fashion. Nucleotides are the monomer building blocks of both DNA and RNA. Let's examine this in a bit more detail. A nucleotide is composed of three basic parts. The phosphate group, shown here in purple, a sugar, shown in blue, and a nitrogen-containing base, shown here in orange. The sugar in DNA is called deoxyribose, and of course the molecule is named for the sugar. It's called deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA. And while the phosphate and the sugar are both very important, it's the nitrogen base that is the identifying factor of the nucleotide. Let me explain. Every single nucleotide carries the same general phosphate and sugar, but it also carries one of four different nitrogen bases. These bases are categorized based on their shape. For example, the nitrogen base shown here has a single ring structure forming the green hexagon. Two bases, cytosine and thymine, have this shape and are classified as pyrimidines. This one happens to be cytosine. This nucleotide contains thymine, but it's also a pyrimidine because of its single ring shape. Again, it's a hexagon. The nitrogen base in this nucleotide is different. It's composed of two rings and is categorized as a purine. Guanine is shown here in red, and it's a purine, double ring shape. Adenine, shown here in pink, is also a purine because of its double ring shape. I said earlier that DNA is composed of two sides, but this picture is showing just one. You can see four nucleotides on this side. Each is connected to one another below it by a strong covalent bond. These covalent bonds are connecting the phosphate to the sugars, forming the backbone of DNA. Each side of DNA is a chain of monomers forming a large polymer. So what's across from this side? This diagram shows both sides of DNA. Again, each side is a covalently bonded chain of nucleotides. But you can also see dashed lines connecting the sides together horizontally, like the rungs on a ladder. These dashed lines represent hydrogen bonds, and they're very weak. These weak bonds are important because they allow DNA to break apart and reconnect easily, helping it to carry out its functions. But I'll get into its functions in another video. Do you see any patterns in how these bases form pairs and in the number of hydrogen bonds that each one uses? The pattern of base pairing follows two specific rules. First, each base pair must contain a purine and a pyrimidine. Second, the bases must connect with the same number of hydrogen bonds. This means guanine, a purine, is complementary to cytosine, a pyrimidine, because they both use three hydrogen bonds. Adenine, a purine, is complementary to thymine, a pyrimidine, and they only use two hydrogen bonds. Simply put, G pairs with C and A pairs with T. That's all for now. I hope this helped you to better understand DNA structure. And as always, happy studying!